Hey everyone, this is Jason Holland. I'm the owner and travel butler with Travel Simplicity. Uh, if you're wondering what the picture is behind me, this is actually outside my house. So this is local. Uh, it was a sunset a couple nights ago. Tonight though, I have the privilege of being again with uh, Avi, one of our local travel butlers in Japan. And he's actually gonna show us around his office. So um, Avi, hello. Hi, good evening for you. It's a uh, good morning for us here in Japan. That's right. It's what? It's uh, 8 o'clock here in the evening, and I think it's what, 9 a.m. for you? 9 a.m. here in Japan. Yeah, we start in the day. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, good morning. <laughs> good morning. So um, last time we were in a small village near my house, and now actually we're quite uh, downtown in Kyoto. And, um, and we had to talk about this, Jason, about our office. And I suggested to do the office because the whole office is really representing what Japan is and what it's fascinating uh, to come. One of the main reasons uh, that it's fascinating so much in Japan is, is the very dynamic um, tension okay. and dynamic dialogue between tradition and modern. Mm. And one of my uh, favorite saying is uh, by one of the craftsmen is that tradition is continuous innovation. And Kyoto is a very good place for that because for hundreds of years, thousands of years, uh, it was, uh, sorry, hundreds of years, it's 1,100 years, it was the capital with lots of craftsmen around. And, and until today, we have craftsmen that keep this tradition. And how to innovate in times that not everybody wear kimono or using um, uh, umbrellas made of paper and so on, how do they still survive? And then the office is really uh, paying homage to the Japanese tradition but also looking at the innovative part of it and the innovative uh, craftsmen. And um, this, this calligraphy is a good start. Yeah, we are still out of the door of the office, but this calligraphy was done by a young lady that meets our guests when they come sometimes and they do calligraphy experience with her. But she's um, uh, also, for example, uh, uh, there is a, I think it's a Nikon uh, or Seiko uh, uh, clock that shows the time with her calligraphy. So you see the time by calligraphy and not, not the usual time. So yeah. another innovative way of doing that. Beautiful. Uh, we, try to do, we try to see uh, up there downstairs, which is a bit noisy. There is another calligraphy we use that does actually contemporary calligraphy, exactly like contemporary um, uh, art. And I have a piece inside. The, the one downstairs is very impressive, but I have a small uh, contemporary one inside. So I'll show you in a moment. Okay. Now, as I said, we are outside of the office. <clears throat> and Anton is here. Let me turn the camera around so you can see okay. something over the other side. There is this kind of um, roof, small roof, and if I go closer, it's hard to see because of the light, but the, it's a mud wall here. And there is this huge log that we actually split it into two because we couldn't carry it up here in the stairs. <laughs> um, and um, there is an... Um, when you go to tea ceremony, tea ceremony is an essential part of Japanese culture. When you go to a photo tea ceremony, um, there is, you go through a garden into the tea house, and then you have to see, it's called machi Ai, the, the waiting space, which is actually a pose between the outside world into the tea world. So you stop all the one in mind with all the busyness of the daily life, and you, you just sit. Yeah. It's kind of meditative moment that you sit and relax, put aside all the worries of the day, and then you are invited to enter the tea, the, the tea house. And you enter the tea house, and then you enter that relaxedly, and you are ready to go and, and experience the tea as it should be. So we created that as, as a place, a space for people coming from outside to stop before they come in, and then come in and meet us and be with us as they come and leave all the worries behind. And also you will see that we actually have a tea house inside the office. So this is the door I'm going to open and we go into the office. I turned all the lights today on for you uh, because we are on remote work. So there are very few people here in the office and usually we don't, um, we, we keep the lights down also so to keep energy and so on. So coming here. Showing us behind the scenes, even though uh, everyone else isn't there. That's, that's really wonderful, thank you. No, no problem. So uh, starting here, uh, in Japan, uh, we don't go into houses with shoes. So also our office, actually, we have slippers here. I have my slippers over there. And behind this beautiful wall, we have all the slippers of the other people. So I'll take my shoes off to start the, 
walking you through just to show you how it works in Japan. By the way, this is my, if you can see, this is my arrows and bow. I told you last time I'm using a bow that yeah. made by a guy who is 21st generation of bow makers. Yes. So this is our shoe rack. So everybody put have their shoes um, and we start here. So um, look at this beautiful bench here, which made by a very favorite uh, guy of the uh, carpenter. Uh, live in the mountains. I like him very much. And what he does in very Japanese way, he basically taking the wood and following the natural lines and create things with the natural line of the wood. This specific wood is very heavy. I'm not sure the name in English. Um, hinoki in, uh, uh, sorry, ke keyaki in Japanese. Hinoki cypress. Uh, uh, so it's a very um, special uh, uh, kind of, uh, of uh, wood. But it's beautiful how he innovates with that and create very creative things. I'll show you also some other things he did in our office. Uh, now, <clears throat> he's from Kyoto area. But you see the wall here, and I'll go closer. It's a metal, which I'm not sure what kind of it's a metal. It's a, it's a mixture of um, copper and other things. And what he did, he took a traditional uh, way of... Um, of um, um, uh, craftsmanship that used to be in Japan. They made uh, vases of that. They made uh, some art crafts for daily use using metal, which used to be very popular in Japan, but it's kind of boring in, in the eyes of modern eyes. And he thought, how can I continue? Because nobody bought his stuff anymore. And he um, developed this technique that creates this special pattern on the metal, as you can see here. And it does by putting special kind of natural chemical. Uh, and, and he put them... Um, a rice husk, you know, when you grain, when you turn rice from a whole grain to white, they have all the uh, leftover that they, they take out. So he put it on and he burned it. And he burned it to, together with some other organic materials. And it creates that beautiful pattern on the metal. So this is very innovative way. And you can see it um, right here, it's all metal. And, and actually I was, for a long time, I was thinking how should be the office entrance be? how this wall should be. And I was looking for different ways and then I found that it wasn't cheap, but I said, I want to support him. Actually, the whole company went uh, to that area to see craftsmanship. And then we said, we want to support him and it's beautiful and I never regret. Look at this beautiful blue thing here. It's the same uh, artist. Okay. So this beautiful color again, it's uh, gained by natural material using natural uh, methods that he developed to again, enhance what um, could disappear actually. Otherwise, as a tradition, yeah. it's a beautiful one here. Now, <clears throat> going into the, into the window here, look at this beautiful piece of pottery. Um, what you see down here is actually done by, uh, he put a piece of um, charcoal, and this is the, the stamp of the charcoal. It's a young artist who used very traditional um, uh, methods, and it's actually um, a vase for flowers, which is very difficult actually to use even for Japanese, but He's very innovative and looking for new ways to use traditional ways. So again, beautiful. Um, look at the pottery down here. Sorry, Jason. Yeah, speaking of flowers, Ikebana is, is big there, isn't it? Very big. Uh, we have sometimes people put in some uh, stuff here, as you see this one. Actually, I collected those in my house and put them on, so it doesn't follow Ikebana rules. I'm not an uh, Ikebana teacher. I didn't study Ikebana. Um, I do want to, but I just put it for nice, even though nobody, almost nobody is here. Again, uh, what you see here is pottery done by an um, artist that use very creative. It's not traditional what you see here, but it's really using traditional aspects, the texture of the material and all that is, again, using a technology. Um, craftsmanship that really supports um, uh, the present time. Tradition is continuous innovation. Moving forward, we have a paper artist here who took pieces of newspaper. If I would go closer, you can see even the written under it. And he burned it, here is Richard came in, and he uh, burned that and used a piece of art from uh, actually newspaper. Wow. So it's a paper artist to use in different ways to, I don't know how much you can catch on the camera, but it's really beautiful piece. And you can see the pieces of the written newspaper down, down here. Oh, I do see that. In different places. Yeah? So, so this is... I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. And then we go into the office. Again, um, look here. What we have here is a bamboo floor. Again, Japan and Asia is bamboo. You see that. 
of mm. course. <clears throat> and this is a masterpiece of, of the office, one of the masterpieces. This is a tea house. Now, it's very special tea house because it's a um, hectagon, which is completely unusual for Japanese. I also used pieces of wood from old houses they destroyed. So we recycled like this piece here that you can see. They call it Ramai. It's in old Japanese houses that uh, they tear in apart and build new apartments and all that. But look at these beautiful pieces here. Another piece of wood, it's difficult to see because it's, uh, you know, the way it goes here. And this one here. And I will zoom out and you can see the tatami, Mm. Tatami floor down here, which is a straw mat and the utensils of the tea ceremony. I what is very special? I love the smell of tatami mats. Yes, especially the new one, the green one. Uh, we had some guests who were very surprised about the smell. They said the room smells strange and we explained them. This is the freshness of nature and this is what Japanese appreciate very much. I think so, um, I almost, um, I, uh, for one Part of the time we were thinking of building a house and I really wanted to put a tatami mat uh, room in our house. In fact, I someday maybe we'll still do that. Yeah, um, yeah. here we had actually, because of the shape, we had to have a specially um, a custom design those tatamis because it's not a usual shape. It has to adjust to the hectagon. So I will show you in a moment. And you can see here the stone garden. Again, the stone garden, we even have the rack here that we uh, made for as, as a passage between the walking area to the fun area, but also as, a, as an aesthetic, again, to the Japanese culture and, and, the, and the step stone into the tea house that you can see here. Uh, I'm going back. Now, Jason, you've been to Japan, so and as you know, we have something called tokonoma. In Japanese house, we have the special place, uh, the alcove kind of, where they put a um, piece of art, tea ceremony, bonsai, uh, so not tea ceremony, sorry, like ikebana, bonsai. It's actually where the Japanese connect the most into nature. Now here again, in very innovative way, we created tokonoma with a paper here that we change by seasons. Sorry, I turned it around. We change by seasons. And it's made by an uh, amazing, amazing, innovative uh, Japanese artist. I have one piece here and I have another one down here. I'll show you out of that. You can see that piece of paper. He used modern, uh, very traditional techniques, but in very modern way. And you see, this is a piece of art. We put it on a frame. This area here in the office, we call it the middle way. Um, it's in the middle of the office, more or less, but also the middle way is the other name of Buddhism, as you might know. And we have the kind of a Buddha things here, but the paper here is this um, Japanese artist that we support very much. And in, as we do in Japan, we change in the seasons. Uh, according to the seasons of so the paper on the tokonoma changes according to the seasons. Uh, this one I put because um, now in, uh, actually it's a bit off season, but I put, it, um, I put it usually in June. So we have a bit early for this one because it's represent the rainy season in Japan. And, and uh, this is very green, so I wanted to have that. But also May is very green season in Japan when all the new leaves come up after the weather, uh, they starting in the spring and then the May is the peak of that. And May is a very beautiful season also to come to Japan. So uh, what, we what have is, it now. Yeah, if, what, what is some of the favorite times of the year for you in Japan? Well, as you know, uh, people really think about the cherry blossom, but cherry blossom is also very, very busy time. Right. And I personally, I like the fall. <clears throat> I like the, the foliage, which is very beautiful. May is amazing season because it's um, less people, but also um, very beautiful in nature. The nature is very, very green, and I like that very much. Okay. Um, so this is another uh, time. Uh, we found that actually in the last few years, actually winter is a really good season because very, very few tourists. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come from New York, it's warmer than New York, of course. <laughs> and then uh, unless you go with a deep mountain, so winter can be very nice season. Very, and, and if it's a sunny day, it's quite warm actually. So you can enjoy very nice with very less tourists. Um, a beautiful concept is also in the stones here, the stone garden. Is under goes under the, the tea house. So it starts from the big ones to the small. There is a beautiful story behind it. I will make, uh, make it short. I will just say in, in our work is, is for understanding the guest as you do very well, very, really understanding the guest uh, needs. So you help us to understand that. And then going, uh, getting the concept right, which are the big stones. And again, going, going into the small details to be able to create a tool that you know, be seamless. So this is part of 
of the concept of the garden here. Um, we also built it in a way to be um, homey, so we have the kitchen here. And look at this beautiful um, bar. We have a bar and we have parties here, and people are allowed to drink as long as the style of their emails will not change. So they're allowed to drink even if they need, if they need a drink even in daytime. Uh, but as I said, as long as the style of the email doesn't change, so they can drink a bit. And we, have, we had a crack in the piece of wood, and it's the same guy I showed you outside. And he used that and filled it up with stones. Again, very um, Japanese and stones are, of course, wood, but then stones are here. So this is our um, bar, and uh, you can see it here. It's lovely. Yeah. Um, I have this box here. Let me turn the light. Sorry, I mean, it's moving around with it, I believe with the, but it's very interesting. I'm going to show you something quite um, impressive, I believe. Um, I'm going to open a box which has a teacup. Now the teacup was done, uh, there is a style of uh, pottery called the Raku, uh, a family that started 500 years ago. And this is the 15th generation of Raku. He's still alive, he's in his 50s. Amazing. And I, I got it present, but for you to understand, I got a present of 40,000 US dollars. What? Cup of tea. So think about, like you buy a picture of Picasso, you pay, you know, <laughs> you pay what you pay, it's because it's Picasso, right? Even if you, you say, ah, oh, I could do it myself, I could give my child to do that, you know? Uh, but this is a cup of 40,000 dollars again um he studied um, pottery uh, not pottery art actually in in italy and when he came back he started he was not going to follow his father and then he came back and he said actually no when i was in italy i understood what is the depth of japanese culture and i actually get got interested because i was going to ask so much about japanese culture and um, he started doing things and the people of kyoto the traditional ones started started uh, criticizing him and he's, uh, because he's, they said, oh, you, your pottery doesn't keep the Raku spirit. It, what it does, it's actually we have the, we feel the Italian influence on you, the Western influence. And he said, tradition that lives in the past is a dead tradition. We should, we should um, absorb the spirit of the past. We should um, be inspired with the spirit of the past and make it relevant to the present. And this is the tradition, continuous innovation. And this is a piece by this guy, 15th generation, just um, uh, last year, he passed the, 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 to his son the, the title, and his son now is the 16th generation. So he retired, he's still working, of course, but he retired from his title, but then his son is now leading the Raku um, uh, tradition, which is quite amazing. I think we don't call him by name, we call him Kichi Zaimon, it's like saying, uh, your highness, you know? Um, you should. You cannot buy this anywhere. Uh, you, be, you need to be introduced to the family by somebody. You go on a wait list of about between six months to three years, wow. and you, they ask you. They ask you like three questions. You want it black or white? You want to use it or not? I mean, it's, it's supposed to be an object, or for those. And you have to promise that you will never sell it. It's not for business. Yeah. And after you pass that, after six to three, six months to, to three years, they call you to come. They show you what they have. If you, you're supposed to like it. And if you don't like it, they, they will put in just in case two or three pieces. And you choose the one you want. And then you've got a small envelope with the price. And the price can go from 40000 like this one, up to 300000 Now, he ca here comes the, most, the important part of the intro intro introduction. The person who introduced you, knows that you will not run away, that you will, uh, you will pay the money and you will stand behind the, 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 the conditions that were set. So we're looking at a beautiful piece. It's basically a museum level, uh, $40,000. And I was very lucky to get it present. I have some good friends <laughs> and uh, connections. So, and, and when we have sometimes people come, Jason, next, next time you come to Japan, please come and have a seat, a um, cup of tea with me in this beautiful um, tea house. Um, that we can um, uh, drink tea from a uh, Raku um, cup. Many people in Japan would like that. I would um, like that very much. Movie. So for people, Avi, for people that don't know what Raku is, can you explain just a little bit? Yes, uh, it's a very interesting story. Um, um, 
there was, um, in that time, there was a shogun. Shogun was the military leader of Japan, a samurai who was the head of the state. Many of you have heard the name. He was actually, um, uh, practically, he was much powerful than the emperor, even though he was under the emperor officially. So he needed to have the stamp of the emperor for rules. So there was a guy who was studying uh, pottery. His name was uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. And he studied the uh, uh, tea ceremony with the greatest master ever of Japanese history, Senorikyu. Senorikyu was the top of the top of the masters of all over Japan. And Senorikyu had a good friend who was a potter. Senorikyu was also a Zen monk. And his uh, tea ceremony was coming very much from that tradition of Zen. And actually tea ceremony is very much connected. Think about it as meditation in action. I mentioned that about Japanese archery, you asked me last time. So Japanese archery is also a meditation in action and tea ceremony is the same uh, when you connect it to Zen. And uh, this friendship actually created, and, and the, the Senorik, you told this potter, Raku was his name, he asked him, please make, he told him how he want the teacup to be, the ultimate spirit of tea ceremony inspired by Zen should be. And this is how the Raku um, tradition was created. So they say that the Raku tradition is actually the, the direct express of tea ceremony by Senorikyu, who until today considered as the top of the top tea masters in Japan in all history. And, and they have a very specific style of um, burning. They burn it actually in low fire. They use a very, very special kind of glaze, which is kept secret. Mainly they have blue or red. Um, if I would take it to the sunlight, you will see even green here and all kinds of colors. And they also even, um, every um, Raku master pick up a, or dig the clay for his grandchildren. So they go two generations ahead and keep the clay for his grandmaster. So the guy now, already um, um, the guy who made this one, uh, Kichi Zaimon, he already um, uh, have the, the clay ready for his grandmother, uh, grandson. And, and his son that just now became, he will start digging for his grandson. So they, this is how they keep the tradition and also the glazing. The material for the glazing, they keep in generations. So again, it's very common in Japan. Uh, in Kyoto, you have uh, over 100 families that are 100, uh, have more than um, uh, 10 generations. So we're talking about 500 years and up. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Um, so I'm going again to the, the garden, and here is another piece. So we have the tea ceremony uh, room here, and we have another uh, space here that people in the office, you know, it's a relaxed place, they sit on the cushions. But what we used here is you can see these pieces of wood. Actually, there are beams from old houses again. That been, it's a house that's been destroyed in front of my eyes, and I went there and I asked them to give me these pieces of um, you see the beams. Uh, Machia in Japan is, is another word for houses that really disappear and are moving around a bit. Um, I hope to go, you can get a better view here. So it's a space that we created in this way. Originally in the design, I was supposed to have another space that will be the, the future, kind of complete futuristic, will be all glass with no, um, with no frames or anything, but we, we gave it up in the end. But, so we created the tradition, the old houses that disappear, but we still, really like this um, touch of a uh, warm feeling of Japanese house. And actually you see this table, to express that warmness, what is holding the table under? Let me show you. Um, uh, how the Japanese used to heat their houses. So, you know, in old days, they used to have these containers with ash, and then you put coil in, and you sit just around it and warm up. Okay. So this is the way in very much in deep countryside, you can still see them, but this is how they used to warm up the houses. So we have three of them under this table and they sit inside a place that is a homage to the traditional ways of Japan using those old uh, beams that those houses disappearing more and more. So it's really, um, again, paying homage to that. Okay. Um, this is our common table here that uh, people have lunch and, uh, and sometimes they have meetings and but this is the space for lunch. Here we have all the fun area. As you can see, we have even golf and table tennis and stuff that people do. And touching lives is, is the motto of, of what we want to do uh, through traveling. So when uh, we talk with you, we try to get the information of how can we touch their lives? How can we have a transformational um, experience coming to Japan, which Japan can really offer that. Another space of the same guy who did the wood before. And you see this um, different ways of using the 
kind of innovative ways to use in spaces of the uh, shelves. And this is, we call it Wikipedia of the, the books here and, and stuff. And um, this is the, 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 the uh, modern uh, contemporary style calligraphy that is, I mentioned before. It's a small piece, so you can see my hand here just to get an idea. Downstairs, we have a huge one, which is very beautiful. One, this is our meeting room. At the moment, we have a big um, Are we here again? Guy may. It's uh, okay, it's yeah. similar to it represents our logo with the tree inside also. But this is a very beautiful piece of um, um it's in piece because it's again represent our Avi, you're you're breaking up, Avi. I can't uh and uh, and uh, and close. Well, she, she did wave this herself and dye, dye it herself, the whole thing. So we have all these pieces on the wall, different pieces. Let me turn the light on. Um, and then um, she, she teared the part. I'll, uh, I'll, so I, I'm not sure how much you can see, but she teared apart this um, cloth, as you can see here, and then she tied it again. The strings, different strings together. So. Basically, the idea is that um, in travel, we put uh, different cultures together. We put people who never would meet each other together. And, and, uh, and this is how we connect lives and we connect cultures, we connect people. We connect people with themselves. I mean, a family that comes, if we can create those spaces for them to, to be together, the right space to experience together, then it creates a closer relationship. So this is the idea of this clause here. I love it. Which, uh, yes. What a, what a great so this is our yeah so this is our meeting room we have also walking space is on the other side and this is a basically our open space we have a big um, a Japanese really like um, plants. And uh, we have those here, the whole uh, window of ours, you can see. Uh, it's all, all the window here is the whole thing with plants. So we have that. And we try to use all uh, natural materials. So it's all wood. Uh, you see the, the tables also done by Thai. Is that, and we have a small place here. For, People have yoga classes and they have a small gym. There is a lady who was here yesterday and did some have a boxing uh, training here. She likes that very much. And so this is here. We are coming back to, um, to the entrance. So um, very much, even for Japanese, when they you think it's, um, it's um, um which is in English um lacquerware. But actually it's pottery. The oh that that one's pottery? Japanese eyes to make that um, beautiful thing. As you can see it's not it's the, the shape of it, but asymmetric is again very important part of Japanese culture and Japanese aesthetic. Jason, I was talking without stop. You probably wanted to ask me something. <laughs> no, I was just, uh, the lacquerware is interesting. I actually have some uh, lacquerware bowls that I brought uh, from Japan that are absolutely beautiful. I love the red color. Um, that deep, deep red color, I think is just beautiful. So, yeah, I'm trying to find the spot here with the lights so you can see it's really, really nice. Uh, again, we use it for flowers, as you can see that thing here in the middle. Uh, but it's really beautiful um, and it really looks like lacquer. People don't recognize until I tell them to touch it and actually it's pottery. Um, and it's it right here in the, you know, uh, behind the tokonoma, that uh, alcove I mentioned before of the tea ceremony place, I'm moving back. So you can see from closer the beautiful uh, paper that this guy is making. It's again, very innovative paperwork of this guy, which I like him very much. It's uh, and our uh, walking space, by the way, this is how we call it. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good thing to call it. 
you have, yeah. you have such a beautiful office. Thank you for uh, thank you for taking us around the oh, Gotham City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we had here. Um, you see the cherry blossom. Somebody made at home all this flower. Uh, because we were going to have a party, but because of the corona, we had to cancel. So she brought it here into the office. Fine. So we have the tree and we say thank you for many people. Um, so we had the, oh, we had the uh, birthday party uh, of all the people from uh, January to March. So we wrote thank you for all these people to each one of them that had this birthday. So it's here on the, on the glass window here. So again, Japan is very much that uh, tradition and modern all the time and, the, and, the, and that dimension, uh, dynamic uh, between them is that beautiful, um, what makes Japan so beautiful and, and I was coming and seeing once, you know, we can come. But um, this is just an example. And then living in Japan for so many years, we, I, I'm, still, I'm still, you know, um, appreciating that and, and really trying to uh, and we involve that, uh, we incorporate that into our office. So every time we come, Actually, we remember this this uh, craftsman that doing that, and we try to incorporate our visits into these people. So <clears throat> both are benefits: the guests who come and see them, and and and, uh, and uh, the craftsmen that are uh, getting exposed to uh, and, and showing their art to and craftsmanship to people. I think it's very beautiful. Uh, the, you know, just the attention to detail and the the craftsmanship and the you know just the aesthetic Jap of J the Japanese people and the Japanese culture is just something very, very special. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is what um, makes the craftsmanship of Japan uh, what they are. I mean, the, that uh, extreme attention to details, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, Avi, thank you so much. It uh, was certainly a pleasure. I, uh, I really enjoyed talking with you. I enjoyed seeing the office. Uh, you have an absolutely beautiful, beautiful place, and I'm really glad that we were able to uh, showcase that and, and share that with uh, my clients and friends and potential clients. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, Jason, and I hope um, people will um, come to visit us when time is, is right, and I hope to see you here in Japan, not just on the, on the video. Absolutely, me too. Well, you have thank a wonderful you much. day ahead of you, and, um, and we will talk soon. Yeah, thanks a lot, and um, goodbye from Japan, and I hope all can uh, keep safe and optimistic. I'm sure we will be um, over that in, uh, when time comes. I'm looking thanks forward to it. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.